This is the bucket of rose hips I've just picked this afternoon. Now, I remember when I was a kid, my parents telling me about when they were kids during the war, and they were given rose hip syrup. Now, the reason kids during the war were given the syrup was because it was high in vitamin C, but Britain wasn't importing any fresh fruit. So, no oranges, no lemons, and so on. So, we needed an alternative source of vitamin C. Now, these rose hips here have, per weight, more vitamin C than oranges and lemons. So we have, right here on our doorsteps, an excellent source of vitamin C. During the war years, there was a scheme run by the government under which volunteers could go out, pick the rose hips, and they were paid a penny a pound for them, and they all went into factories to make, vitamin, to, to make rose hip syrup high in vitamin C, which then went to be fed to the kids. It's a scheme that ended in 1950. And uh, I'm not suggesting that we bring back a scheme like that, but what I am wanting to do is to encourage people to look at rose hips as an alternative to oranges for vitamin C. And what we're going to do now is actually make some rose hip syrup using a war an old wartime recipe. You need two kilos of rose hips, chop them in half, put them in a jam pan and add three litres of water and bring it to the boil. Whilst the pan is heating up, what I thought I'd do is show you the inside of a rose hip. Now, as you can see, the flesh is on the outside and right in the core as well. And it's surrounded by a large number of seeds. Now, the, the birds love the seeds and they will be you often find when you're um, out picking rose hips that they, the birds have already been there and they've stripped open the, the rose hips. Uh, but as you can see, the large numbers of seeds that the birds will eat, but humans can't eat them. Uh, they're covered in a very fine hairs which make them indigestible and are quite an irritant as well. And I remember as kids what we used to do was uh, used to split open uh, these uh, rose hips and put the seeds down people's backs uh, and uh, use it as a niching powder. It was, it was great fun, but very annoying uh, to the person who got caught um, with the seeds put down the back of their neck. Um, and not that I'm suggesting that people should do it now, but uh, it was great fun when we were kids. Once the pans come up to the boil, leave it to simmer for about five minutes. Then need to strain it through a jelly bag take about an hour to strain it and at that point put the pulp back in the pan another three litres of water bring it up to the boil simmer for five minutes and then repeat the process of straining it through the jelly bag the pulp has been straining for 24 hours now so the liquid is now ready to be measured then put it back into the pan and then need to add 650 grams of sugar for every litre of liquid and then heat it up, stirring it to make sure the sugar is dissolved. As it's coming up to the boil you might find that this sort of scummy layer forms and all you need to do is spoon that off and then let the liquid boil for about three minutes. Here's a couple of the 14 bottles we've just made of rose hip syrup. Now, what can it be used for? Well, you could uh, drink it neat as a just, if you're wanting something sweet, a spoonful of it would go down very well. Or you can drizzle it onto cakes, put it onto pancakes, maybe even mix it into rice pudding. But if you want to be really naughty, put a shot of gin or vodka into a glass, some of the syrup onto it, a couple of ice cubes and enjoy the drink.